How close are the Saints to these teams? And Jake, it's it's it gets real interesting to me because in many ways, they're very close. In the most important way, they're miles away. And what I mean is like if you look at some of the elements of a team like the Rams, okay, uh Jalen Ramsey, okay. Saints got Marshawn Ladmore. It's an elite corner right there, right? Uh the Rams have Aaron Donald. Saints don't have an Aaron Donald. But they have a they very good defensive line. They got, dudes. they got a very good defensive line, right? Uh, the Rams don't have it in Mario Davis. They got great linebackers as well, but not but, but you know, not like in Mario Davis, right? Um, Saints got offensive line. You look at Ryan Ramsey, that, that compares very well with Big Wit, right? They got Alvin Kamara, better than Cam Akers. Uh, they got Mike Thomas, not Cooper Cup, but Mike Thomas, a lot of good news coming out of the Mike Thomas camp, right? So you see a lot of these elements. You're like, okay, the Saints are like close, but... What did the Rams winning yesterday prove? What did it ultimately prove? You got to have the guy under center. I mean, they were in this spot a few years ago with Jared Goff and put up, what, nine points? And then you put Matt Stafford on the team, and look at what happened. Matt Stafford, a man who had been buried in Detroit for his entire career, finally gets the opportunity to be with a more competent coach and franchise, and look at what happened. You got to have the quarterback. And so it's funny, Jake, the Saints in so many ways – have the elements. They just don't have the single biggest element, yeah. which can go one of two ways. That can be terrifying because those guys are so hard to find, or maybe it's a bit intriguing or encouraging because if you do get lucky and you draft a guy or maybe convince a guy to come here or you find that guy, well, then maybe all of a sudden you can be right back in the kind of contending conversation. Yeah, when you look at the Saints and you're like, okay, what are they missing? You're exactly right. Like, that's the easy part is they're missing the signal caller. They're missing their franchise quarterback, and you hope that they can get that because it is very difficult. Has it been done? Yes, it's been done. So so don't send the list of names in of quarterbacks that have won it that aren't franchise quarterbacks. But in this day and age, it's more important to have that guy than I think ever before in the NFL. Yeah. This is a league that has, I, I think, five, six generational quarterbacks like playing right now, like in their prime. That's not even counting guys on their way out. Like we could sit here and we could have that conversation about Burrow and Allen and Mahomes and all these young quarterbacks, right, that are generational type talents. If you don't have that guy, you don't have much of a shot. So that's that's the easy part. And look the, at the Niners. They probably had the best roster in this playoffs, arguably. Yeah, and, and they've got a good quarterback. They got a good quarterback. Yeah. They don't have a great quarterback by any means. And and that's why they fall short. The Saints also, what they have to have is playmakers. You don't need seven of them. Like you don't even need the the Bengals who have three really good options at receiver. They do. I mean yeah. that's three good options and some even great. Like in when you look at the Rams, like look how much Odell going out. Even having Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup ended up playing fantastic. I'm not. This isn't against him. I'm saying, look how much that changed their game. Yep. Just losing one of their weapons. You've got to have more weapons on the outside if you're the Saints. Like you need Michael Thomas to be Michael Thomas, and then you need one or two other pieces. They've got okay pieces right now. Can if Callaway's your three and you get a, a badass two, mm-hmm. you feel pretty good about yep. your receiving core, right? And if you go get a tight end that you feel better about, you feel better about your situation. But even with the quarterback, if the Saints don't get more weapons and Alvin Kamara now, like that's a huge question mark now. But let's yeah, say that let's say that we don't know let's say let's say even he's back. Okay. Well you gotta have the back too. Like you gotta have that guy that you can turn around, hand it off to, be creative with as well. The Saints to me truly feel like quarterback's gotta be number one issue, but right behind that it's got to be some more weapons for whoever that quarterback is. Yeah, and you can find, I mean, I think you you, sh- you should be able to find a number two receiver in the draft, right? I, I don't know if it's a first-round yes. pick or not, but, like, you should be able to find a number two receiver in the draft. So it's like, I feel okay about that because once you get the number two, then, like you said, Jake, everything else falls into place. If Thomas is healthy, if Kamara, you know, we don't know the suspension, I don't know what's going to take place there, but between Thomas, Kamara, if Callaway's your three, like, you're going to be you're going to be fine there, but, again, who is going to? Throw them the ball. And will it be like a Malik Willis, who we interviewed and had a very good week at the Senior Bowl? Uh, will it uh, be like a Russell Wilson, who was chilling with Roger Goodell last night? I can't imagine how boring that conversation probably <laughs> was, dude. He was trying to explain <laughs> Mr. Unlimited to him. Uh, I mean, he was kind of talking into Roger's ear a little bit. Yeah. Roger's just kind of... Uh, and Roger was like, you know that conversation you have where you're looking straight forward like, bruh. 
It, I'm trying to watch this game. Well, it's like a lot of the memes that have come out of girls in the club with like somebody talking, you know, yeah. like very aggressively into the air. But whatever, I'll take I'll take Mr. Unlimited. Absolutely, I would. So that's the thing. The Saints are kind of close, but the problem is the question they have to answer is the biggest and hardest to answer question in all football. Like literally what everybody's constantly trying to answer and only a very few get it. And you had it. For about 16 years, you had it. Now you got to try to answer that thing again. Uh, if you can, then you can remain relevant for another 10 to 15 years. All right, when we get back, let's close out hour number one. And we got a hell of a weekend and winners and losers segment to open up hour two. Keep it locked here on OTB.